You are listening to Comedy Club for Kids presents. Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. Salut, salut, it's nice to see you. Uh, of course, I'm not seeing you, as so that would mean you were here. And firstly, how did you get in? Secondly, please don't sit on that, it will get very upset and try to eat you. Uh, salut, salut, I mean, it's nice to hear you, obviously. No, wait, hang on, you're hearing me. OK, hang on, let me try this again. Salut, salut, it's nice for you to hear me. Well, that, that doesn't work, does it? So, excuse me, while I just rewind today's introduction so that I can put it in the bin. <laughs> Ah, that's better. Right, hello and welcome to Radio Nonsense, the official comedy club for kids podcast suitable for absolutely everyone except Wilfred Snafflepoop the seventh. He knows exactly why, and if he's listening, there will be trouble. Uh, I am, and always have been, Tiernan, and I hope you're all doing okay out there in the big wide world, or even the small thin world, or even the medium medium world. Why do we say big wide world when the world is like a sphere, so it's not any more wide than it is big, it's just sort of the same... Everywhere, isn't it? Well, except for, like, the mountain bits. Sort of like the Himalayas, which I've always thought of as the Earth's knees or elbows. Hmm. Uh, I should say, if you are listening to this on the small, thin Earth, please be careful while listening so that you don't fall off. And if you are tuning in from somewhere outside of the Earth, please can you pick me up some of those lovely blue biscuits from the Alpha Centuri services. Thanks, they're so tasty. Uh, There's a lot of questions being answered on today's show, so I won't rattle on much more. Sorry, that's just my Himalayas. I mean, my knees. Uh, What I do have to say is thanks yet again for even more brilliant questions that keep landing in the Comedy Club for Kids email inbox with a big old thud. Uh, We have now got enough to keep doing episodes until around the year 2053. Um, However, if you still have things that you need answering, then you can send them. Or, you know, if you want to send jokes or anything at all, uh, then please get your dwindling fart trees, sorry, grown-ups, to help you email us at podcast at comedyclubforkids.co.uk. And we'll get to them at some point in the future when podcasts podcasts probably don't even exist anymore and we'll have to beam the answers directly into your brain using lasers or robot bees which is incidentally what they already do in Alpha Centauri. And now the importantest bit. Ask your grocer or chemist for full details tomorrow. I am joined on the podcast today by Nick Doody, a.k.a. leading expert in pirouetting on a Tuesday, porridge activist and four-time winner of Best Animated Film at the What If Nicks Were Films Awards. Hello Nick, how are you? Hello! Hi, um, can I just say the pirouetting on a Tuesday thing? Um, I am an expert in pirouetting any time midweek. They just happen to give me that award on a Tuesday and I will not rest until I get the Wednesday award as well. That's fair. Why is it? Can you? I, mean, I, I appreciate this might be a sensitive question. Why don't you pirouette on a weekend? Uh, well, it's just dancing. Is that is that how it changes? Does it does it change to dance? Is it, does pirouetting become dancing on a weekend and it's but it's strictly pirouetting on a yeah? Weekend? If you do dancing and it's not a weekend, that's not dancing. That's just moving. Right. I didn't. Res- I'm not a dancer. You, you, expert, can, you so. can look that up. That is science. That's well. That's what I. I know you're the expert in these things. Obviously, that's why you've won the award. Yeah. So I didn't want to question it, but I. I. You know. I. I've seen people pirouetting on a weekend and thought, well, that's obviously pirouetting, and obviously it's dancing. And I just. It's. I know it's, there's lots of technical terms for all of this, and that's why some people are good at it, and some people like me don't. You know, don't go into dance. Yeah, it's the difference between shoes and dancing shoes. Is uh, what day is it? Is that right? Yeah, if you put shoes on Thursday, it's just Thursday. But if you leave them on over Thursday night, then Friday night. Come Saturday morning, they turn into dancing shoes and all your movements become dancing. Is what, I mean, that, that could be problematic. Let's say if you put on hiking boots on a Friday because you want to go hiking on a Saturday, mm-hmm. but then you wake yep. up, you got dancing shoes on. Uh, they're called hill dancing shoes, yeah. So you can still go up the hill, but you have to dance. Yeah, you just have to do it with extra sass. Right, okay. Which actually could be, more, that could be a lot more fun, I think. Well, it's quite hard to hold sort of one of those... Um, I don't know what those hiking sticks are called, but if you're doing jazz hands, it'd be hard to keep a hold well, of them. They're, well, they're, they're either called walking poles or mm. come Friday night, they're called uh, dancing canes. Oh, of course. Right, of course. Yeah. Sure. And in which case, then jazz hands with a dancing cane is actually perfect. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, that's great. I mean, that's that absolutely fascinating. Yeah, I'm so, is, yeah. This is the reason. So one of the weekends, one of the weekends, people like uh, you know, one of the weeks, one of the reasons people like weekends so much is that, you know stuff turns into dancing. So what was stamping turned into tap. Oh, that's nice. That's much nicer, isn't it? Yeah. Bullying becomes much nicer on a weekend. What, what bullying? Yeah, because if someone if someone stamps on someone else, which I should add, just to say for listeners, that's not very nice. Don't do it. No, but obviously, no. if you were going to do it, do it on. A Saturday, because then it's dancing. Oh no! It's still yeah, dancing it, I, I someone, should say it, it's still it is still nice, illegal yeah. to dance over aggressively. So it doesn't matter whether it's stamping or tapping. Don't do it on someone's head. Yes, yes, and that's that's true. And what about if you're like stamping a letter? Does that then become dancing a letter? Yeah, you're just being silly now. Yeah, sorry. I think you're deliberately misunderstanding because those words are similar. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I, I do apologise. Well, I also thought that you would bully someone by putting a stamp on on their head and then sending them somewhere else. That's true. Yeah, that's that is a way to do. I mean, if we've got any bullies listening, um, first of all, stop it. Mm, but secondly, if you're it. after tips, yeah, just stick a stamp on someone and an address, and the postman legally has to take them. Yeah, the only thing with that I'd have thought is then say if you wanted say if you were the sort of bully that that took their lunch money, which again I'm not advocate. If you are one of those, stop it. But then you wouldn't be able to take their lunch money because you'd sent them to say Iceland or something. Yeah, I mean, it's an expensive way to bully people. And to be honest, I'd mm. prefer it was done to bullies. I mean, one of the things, like, if yes. you've got a bully, bully at your school, get a few of you together, um, club a little bit of pocket money together, get a stamp and a magic marker so you can write clearly on their face, and then put an address and a stamp, and you can just send them away. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea. That's a really that's good idea. That's what we did at my school. Is it? How many do, How many uh, bullies did you send away over, over your years at school? Oh, loads. I mean, eventually it was just me. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I I used to collect stamps and then I eventually just used them all up on um, bullies. And now I look back on it, actually, now I'm talking about it, I realise some of them might not have been bullies, but were more acting in fear because I'd posted so many of their friends. Yeah, yeah. But I guess, you know, there comes a point where it's better safe than sorry, isn't it? And if you're even slightly thinking, is this person acting weirdly to me because I've posted all their friends or are they just a bully? It's better maybe to just put a stamp on their head, send them somewhere else. Yeah, just just just, just leap in first, um, post first, ask questions later. Mm. Um, is it, by the way, is the phrase better safe than sorry? I don't know. I thought it was better. Is it better safe than sorry? I don't know. That makes so much more sense because yeah. I've been doing better unsafe than sorry. Oh. And that hasn't worked out well at all. No, no, that sounds really dangerous. I mean, that's, that's an, that was an awful advice. Yeah, no, that's a really... And again, it, it, listeners, don't do that. That is a thing that definitely you shouldn't do. There's, I, I think you should always no, be... No, don't. Yeah, you, have you been being unsafe rather than saying sorry to someone? Have you been sort of thinking, I'm going to balance precariously on this wall rather than apologise? Yes, that, I thought it was... I just thought that was the phrase. I'm... Nick, that is terrible. I think my granny just had a speech impediment. Maybe, maybe that's it. Is it was it her? Yeah. Advice, her advice. Yeah, better unsafe than sorry. She'd say, "Oh, all right." And then you know, I, I, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd knock a cup over and it would break. And I go, "Oh, sorry." And I'm like, "Oh no, do you know? Do you know what's better than saying sorry?" And then I would just run towards the banisters. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, that's definitely yeah. the, the wrong advice, I think. But I mean, but hey, you, you turned out all right, uh, I think. Apart from that, you've obviously got the big banister mark on your head. But I think that's, yes, that's yes, character that's now, that is. isn't it, Nick? That's what people know you for that now. Yes. Yes, I'm yeah. known as uh, that. Good. I mean, it, it's, it could be all sorts of marks, but you're quite right. That is a banister mark. Um, I tell people it was from a hammer fight, hmm. which, again, I've stopped getting into now that I understand it's better safe than sorry. Yes, and also, presumably, again, have a hammer fight on a weekend. Suddenly, it's a beautiful sort of dancing piece. Yes, it's a, it's a lovely... Using hammers. It, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what... it's just the dance of my people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's great. Lots of good advice already, Nick. I, I mean, I was gonna, I was gonna start by just asking how you're getting on. Really, I haven't, I haven't seen you in a little while. And I just wonder if you have you been all right in between all your your dancing and your hammer fights and uh, and not being very safe. I've been all right. Yeah. I've been all right. Um, I was in uh, I was in hospital last week for a very special operation, where um, to be honest, I don't remember a lot of it. But what I think happened was that um, three doctors get into a magical submarine which shrinks and gets sent into your body to fix you. That's amazing. That's what I think happened, and hopefully they're all back out now. And uh, yeah, that's. I would always have um, a big worry about that. Like, what if they sort of like left something there? 
Like, you know, what if, the, I don't know. Like a tiny doctor. Like a tiny doctor. Like, yeah, well, like a tiny doctor who got left behind, but more like, you know, they just like, they, well, I, I, I would assume doctors wouldn't litter and I would hope they wouldn't litter. And again, if you're listening, don't bully, don't litter. There's a lot of advice not to do on this week's podcast already, but you know. Yeah, don't leave don't leave your face masks around. Yeah, don't leave your face masks around and don't, you know, I was thinking like a coffee cup, you wouldn't want to suddenly, you know, cough and then a little tiny coffee cup comes out and it's because a doctor left it somewhere in No, your you don't want to be, you get, <coughs> hang on, my, ugh, my left lung's full of polystyrene. Yeah, that would be tricky, wouldn't it? But I'd assume doctors are careful about that sort of thing. Yes, they are. They uh, they carry those uh, those sticks with little pointy, pointy sharp ends, and they pick up the litter after them, which is quite painful when they're inside you. But um, mm. for the best, yes, that is for the best. But but I'm glad I mean, you had that, and then the, you saw the doctors a normal size again afterwards. So they all got yeah. out. Yeah, and they're re- they're really good at cleaning up afterwards. And just as they come out, they leave a they leave a little um, stamp on your bottom that says uh, right. "Keep Nick tidy." Oh, that's nice. That yeah, is nice. nice. Yeah, and, and helpful as well. Yeah, that is helpful. But it, yeah. it, what if, yeah, it's helpful, but only if someone sort of can see your bum, because if they can't see your bum, then they might, they haven't got that warning and they don't know to keep you tidy. Yes, but uh, I mean, it's handy for me as well, because I hate people who drop litter. I think it's a horrible mm. thing to do. So now, rather than shouting at them to save my, uh, save my voice, I've got a nice thing to show them. So I can just show them my bum. And That's go, great. Oh, yes. That's really helpful. Yes, I should, yeah. I should keep tidy. Yes, who's that's... Nick? <laughs> that is very, that's a very yeah, very good. Uh, that's a really handy way actually to stop people from littering. Definitely, definitely. I uh, I would advise listeners. Yeah, we've given them a lot of advice they shouldn't do, but I think definitely if someone is littering, show them your bum, and maybe they'll stop littering. Yes, yes. If you think of littering, just listen to my bum. That'll change your mind. That's that's the power. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm glad I'm glad you did right. You say you had you had hospital things, and I understand you've got um you've got a puppy as well now. Yes, not not from yes, the hospital, uh, not related to hospital. I don't. They, they didn't give you a puppy at the end of it. Did they? Oh yeah, yeah, no. It was they, they didn't find that in me. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm afraid, Mister Doody, we've uh, we've had to remove a, a puppy and two kittens. Um, <laughs> yeah, we got a puppy because um, you know, lock, actually, no lockdown happened and everyone had to stay at home. We always thought, oh, we can't have a puppy because we travel all the time and it wouldn't be fair on the dog. And now, you know. COVID-19 said, you're not traveling anywhere for a year. So we went, well, we are going to get a dog. So we Brilliant. did. We got the world's cutest dog. Is the world's cute, officially the world's cutest dog? I think so. Hmm. I haven't seen a cuter one. She's properly, like, really gorgeous little uh, multi-poo puppy. That's the breed. She's a multi-poo, half Maltese, half poodle. It's not half poodle, it's just short for Right, poodle. yeah, I was, I was going to ask then, yeah, because I've had like yeah, malted yeah, yeah. chocolates before, or, you know, like a malted chocolate drink, but you wouldn't want a malted poo drink. No, exactly. It it, it sounds every all of these breeds of dog that are half poodle, just have, they all have the, have the word poo in the name, mm. and it sounds horrible, but looks lovely. Right. You know, oh, it's, it's a, well, it's a poo shan, or it's a cavapoo, or all these things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're they're never, all, they're, all that means is it's half poodle, half something else. Right, right. That's good. And it's and the other, the something else is also half a dog. So it's never like sort of a, a shoe poo. Or yeah, usually. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although there's a kit poo, which is half chocolate covered wafer biscuit and half poodle. Right. That's quite interesting. Probably quite hard to look after, I'd have thought, especially in the summer that it melt a bit. Yeah, and the, down the middle is really thin. You can snap part off and then oh. dump them in tea. Yeah, that's tricky, isn't it? I'm glad you didn't get one of those. Yes, me too. Yeah, very yeah. tempting. Very tempting. Wow. Well, she's, a, sounds... she's, she's a very gorgeous, uh, very gorgeous uh, multi puppy called called Addy, short for Adelaide. And she probably, I mean, she was so cute that the first time we took her for a walk, she nearly caused car accidents. You, you actually, you see wow. people driving past, and you, and they and they can't take their eyes off her. You see that the, as they're going past, their eyes don't move off the dog. Oh my god, look at that dog, she's so gorgeous. And then they plow into a bus stop. Wow. So it's a da- it's a dog that is dangerously cute. Have you had to a dangerous de- dog but cute not... her? Like you need to give her like an ugly hat or some awful glasses or uh, like some big garish like glasses or like a, a, a fake moustache or something that will make yeah, exactly, this dog exactly. is less we, cute. Yeah. Or just sort of yeah, shave half of her and yeah. I don't know. <laughs> put it put a big rude word, like shave the word poo into a coat this sounds very cruel again this 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 episode is full of things listeners don't shave the word poo into your dog 
Uh, unless they are, unless you, they ask you to, obviously, I wouldn't want to. Yes, or, or unless you really need to, as a warning to others. Yes, yes, I mean, I mean there's exceptions to every rule. Uh, yeah, they say, I suppose so. you could shave the word poo into one end and the word food into the other, so you just don't get confused about what to expect. I'd quite like that written on my forehead and bum. I think that would really help me as well. Just food that there, poo that there. That confusion that happens quite often in the tea and asphalt. Well, it's just you know, some days you're very tired, and it, you know, it just I think sometimes a little guidance in life can be very handy. So, you know, yeah, I'm all for. I know what you mean. Sometimes you sit on a signage. plate and you think, oh, I could be. If this would be so much easier. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've all been there, Nick. We've all been. Yeah, there. somebody's somebody's left a sandwich on a sofa. You haven't noticed. You sit in the sandwich and then you go. Oh, wouldn't it be brilliant if this worked? Yeah, yeah, and and now I'm just uncomfortable, and I've got no sandwich. Yeah. Like it was really terrible time, terrible time. Um, well, I mean, I'm glad. I mean, it's, you've been busy for the past year, it sounds, and and I wondered if you know, obviously, everyone listening to us, they've all been stuck at home for the past year. Quite a lot of them might be now back at school. Um, but I just wonder if you've got a tip for people who are stuck at home, because even if they're back at school, they still got to then go home and be at home all night until the next day and all on the dancing weekends. Is there, is there any sort of good tip for anyone listening about what you can do if you're just bored at home? Oh, yeah, because, I mean, the problem with this last year has been you see the same people again and again and again. It does get boring. Mm. So I would recommend um, pretending to be different people every time you walk in the room. <laughs> Quite fun. So what you can do. I think this is, a, this is a fun thing to do. I used to do this a lot as a kid, and it works much better if you are a child than it does if you're a human. Um, being really weird, just deliberately being really weird by just speaking in a way that everyone knows isn't the way you normally speak. You know, if normally you say, hi, mum, just say, good morning, mother. And then just don't, don't mention it, just speak in a very strange manner all along. As though you're not really you, but somebody else in your body. <laughs> like, say for like, for example, say say your name is Amy Barrett, right? And you're a little girl, age about seven or eight. Right? Don't call your mum mum. Call her Mrs. Barrett. Hello, Mrs. Barrett. Is this the normal sort of? Is this the way Amy would normally speak? Yes, I am her. I swear. <laughs> and then run away. That's a brilliant plan. And then, and you said do it every every time you come into the room so you've then got to go away and come back in as someone else yeah or just or just pretend a different thing is happening like like going in and going have my eyes changed color <laughs> and, they'll go, and they'll look at you and go no and you go hooray my experiment worked i'm back <laughs> that is that is an amazing that is an amazing thing to do and and i mean also if, uh, is it worth pretending there i i think it it sounds like it works better if you're constantly someone different but at the same time if you start pretending they're different people that will probably mess them up as well yes if you, but yeah i mean <laughs> parents parents have a lot to put up with but i think you should give them more to put up with yeah um, well they're, they're bored like as well nick this is the thing is we've got to remember that parents are also bored they've been stuck at home for ages too so they need a little bit of change and you know sort of fun for their weekend so if if you're making you know confusing them then that's a little puzzle for their day isn't it yeah i mean if they say if your parents tell you to do something don't go all right go mission accepted captain yeah it's more fun it's far more fun that is brilliant that is an absolutely fantastic tip brilliant and um, there's been so many tips from you already nick i can't believe that i, I asked you for another one to be fair with you know with, <laughs> with the dancing and, and the stamping um and of course uh, this is an audio podcast people will be listening to it with their ears and hopefully not anywhere else again i suppose with the food poo signs i don't know where people listen listen from. to it with your nose and see how it goes try it again yeah another tip for your weekend why not um in between the dancing and uh, but i just wondered as people are listening to it if you have a favorite noise um you can either make for us or at least tell us about uh yes that's an that's an amazing noise what, thank you what what uh what is it what That is the noise of a, a non-existent creature I invented called a wisp, mm. which is like a wasp but nice. Oh, they sound brilliant. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, rather they're not black and yellow. They're uh, green and pink, oh. and they're striped and they're furry like little bumblebees. And if you get stung by a wasp, a wisp will come along and go, ah! land on it, and then instead of stinging you, it has a soothing balm that makes you feel better. They sound amazing. Brilliant. Uh, will, will we be seeing them this summer, do you think? Uh, 
not not unless you eat something that's disagreed with you. No, they're not real. Oh, I, well, I know you said you made them up, but I didn't know if you yeah. sort of made them up in a laboratory and sort of released them into the oh right no, wild they, around uh, the, the country. But obviously, you haven't made you haven't physically made them up. You've imagined, you know, used your brain. No, I had a go. I had a go at just mm. dyeing some bees a different colour, but they don't like it. No, and uh, no, and the honey ends up weird looking. Yeah, and then I guess they probably sting you, and then they don't put balm on it, and then you, and then you've got weird looking angry bees and stings and terrible honey. Yeah, I mean they, I get on quite well with bees generally, so they don't sting me, but they just turn away. No, that's really but there's nothing. Weird. There's nothing worse than going to a garden and all the bees just turning away to face their bums at you. Yeah, that's quite. Yeah, yeah. Feel, that's feel, and, and feel a lot that. of other yeah. people don't notice. They just hear this. I mean, it's in fact what it is. It's just the noise of all the bees going. Don't look at him. He's back. Oh no, I'd I'd hate that. I'd hate I'd hate rejection from bees. I feel yes. like that'd be the last thing I'd need. Well, um, oh, just awful. Well, that is an incredible noise though, and and hopefully we'll see wisps one day in the world. Um, and and ah. the other thing that I uh, I need to ask from you, obviously, is that this is a family friendly podcast suitable for all ages, from ha huh to ha huh, and uh, everything in between. And I just wanted to double check um that. As you know, it's family friendly. I want to check that there is a rude word that you won't be saying, and if you could just tell us what that rude word is that you definitely won't say. Oh, you, well, you know me. I rather than use rude words, I prefer to use words that aren't rude, put together in a way that sounds rude. Mm. So again, it's you know just part of being weird to annoy your parents. It's like the word wizard. But a wizard is someone who can do magic, right? But if you attach it to any other word, it sounds like you're calling someone something really suspicious. You know, you're yeah, right, beef wizard. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what on earth does that mean? But I don't, I don't, I don't think I'd be happy to be called a beef wizard. That sounds awful. And it does, but I mean, it's all right if they've just made a cup of tea. Oh, someone's a tea bag wizard. That it's sort amazing. of makes sense. But if you say it with no context whatsoever, if you just say it first thing in the morning, morning, you teabag wizard. What did that come from? What's that mean? Yeah, yeah. It's a wizard. It's amazing how I've always thought the word wizard was all right until you just said it just now. And immediately it yeah. seems incredibly insulting. Like, all right, yeah, coat right. wizard. Yeah, there's something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or farmer. That's another one. Farmer mm. is a perfectly respectable word. But if you start, to... all right. You're a nose farmer. <laughs> oh, oh, that's brutal. That sounds like somebody who really picks at their bogeys, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Nose, nose farmer. It's really horrible. It's it's also, yeah. I mean, like, and that's a real term, but I've always thought the term llama farmer sounds like it's an insult. Yeah, it does. That sounds sounds like it must mean something else. Yeah, but it doesn't. It just means you've got a farm and it's full of llamas. You're a llama farmer. And yet, if someone goes, you llama farmer, it's like, oh, no, that's awful. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's, that's really weird. It's like karma chameleon. Yes. A karma yes. chameleon and a llama farmer. A llama farmer in your karma pyjamas. It, it all sounds very awful, but it actually quite nice. Alarm. It sounds quite actually in reality, someone who farms llamas having quite calm, you know, sort of karmic pajamas. Uh, it's quite a nice time. Yeah, yeah. If mm. you sold karmic pajamas and car alarms, and you also farm llamas, you could be a car alarm karma farmer llama mama. I don't know. I've, I've lost it. <laughs> car alarm, <laughs> car alarm karma pajama llama farmers. Wow. And if you're friends with Barack Obama, then you'd. Uh, oh. Yeah, you'd have. Everything oh, I hope there. he doesn't go into this now. Barack yeah. Obama, <laughs> car alarm, car pajama, llama farm. I'm not going there. My tongue will fall out. Uh, well, I I really hope he does go into that. I feel like this is a, the true destiny for a man. That's what this invasion go after being president. Uh, yeah, somewhere like that. Imagine, yeah. imagine say if you just once said the phrase Barack Obama's car alarm, car pajamas, llama farm. And somebody told you, hey, calm down. Don't you tell me to be calm? Don't you tell Barack Obama to be a karma, karma, pajama, car alarm, llama farmer? Wow, which again now sounds like an insult. So uh, I feel we've come full circle. I wonder where, where, where do you think his llama farm is? I think it's in the Bahamas. I think it's calm Barack Obama's Bahama, <laughs> car alarm, llama, pajama, llama farm. Uh, I, I, I feel like she, this is She runs with Keir Starmer. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. 
Keir Starmer and Barack, Keir Starmer and Barack Obama's Karma, Karmic Lama Pajama Farm in the Bahamas, where they sell car alarm. I got that. I can't do it. I can't, that's too complicated. Uh, Keir Starmer, Keir Starmer's, Keir Starmer and Barack Obama's Calm Bahama Car Alarm Karma Pajamas Llama Farm. <laughs> Well, I, I'd like to think that that's the rude word that you won't be saying for this episode, Nick. <laughs> I, will, I, I, I will not be trying to say that again. <laughs> I hope you don't. It is it is horrendous. And I, I, I can't even say it in order to not say it. So uh, I'm going to be avoiding it for the rest of this show, too. Um, thank you. Well, that's because um, you're such a phrase wizard. Oh, no. Oh, I can't believe I got taken down like that. That is so brutal. Uh, oh, sorry. Awful. Awful. It. Well, thank you. That that makes it better. That makes it better. Um, well, look, listen, listen, Nick, obviously you've already contributed so much to this show and I feel like listeners have already got so much knowledge to, to, to gain from, from listening to you so far. Yeah, Very you're a kind knowledge, of you to say so. You're, you're a knowledge wizard, Nick. Um, and um, oh. <laughs> uh, but we've got I've got important questions to ask you that have been sent in ah. from um, Ursi, aged eight, uh, from the Isle of Man. And um, Ursi has asked, six questions uh right. which, i mean quite a lot you know some people just ask one ursi has got no i've got quite a lot of stuff that i need to ask and that's fair enough i sort of think that's fair Pretty enough. greedy it, i mean i didn't want to say i think it's a little bit greedy um but you know i didn't want to they're on the isle of man this you know they, they were in lockdown and there's not much to do there is there so ursi's probably she's got a lot of questions i think fair enough maybe well look, we, we'll go through them in order and um, I mean, I always think it's the Isle of Man. It's just got there's just one man there, isn't there? But Ursi's also there. So, that, but I suppose Ursi's Ur- 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 an eight year old girl. So maybe it's Isle of Man and Ursi. Ur- and Ursi. Ur- 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 yeah. Are you sure there's only one man there? What's, what's it's called the Isle of name? Man. It's not called the Isle of People or the Isle of Woman or the Isle of well, Men. I mean, it's called the Isle of Man. There's just one man there, isn't there? Is there? I mean. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure that's how naming places works. Isn't it? The Isle of Dogs, there's like four or five dogs there, right? And the Isle of Man. And Barry in Wales, it's just one guy called Barry there. Oh, is that right? Okay. And I'm London sure is just works. one man called Lon and one man called Don. That's exactly it. Yeah, that's exactly okay. how. Right. I'm sure that's how names, I'm sure that's why places get their names. I, I think some things are just called things, but that doesn't okay. describe them. Some things are called the Isle of Man just because that's the name. Mm. Like Manchester, there's not just like a man in Manchester. I've been to Manchester and there were loads of them. Right. What about hang on, what about the Silly Isles? They're they all have silly. chest hair. Right, and they did all have chest hair, right? Well, there you go, you see. That's true. It's true. But this what I'm saying, the Silly Isles are quite silly. They're they are really ridiculous. Silly. They're absolutely ridiculous. And so that's they that's gotta be spell perfect. silly, right? They spell silly in a silly way. Yeah, exactly. That's how silly they are. Jersey, they all wear jumpers. So, yep, in my experience. Yeah. Yep. So I'm just saying, I definitely okay. Well, maybe maybe there's more than one person on the Isle of Man. It it could be that there's well, Ursi's an eight year old girl, so maybe she because maybe it's just one man, but there's loads of like eight year old girls and Ursi, eight, right. and women. Oh, and that's why. And cats. That's why there's so many questions. Okay, so well, yeah. Ursi's asking questions, but she's asking for a friend. It's the man. Right. Oh, I see. And he's asking questions because he's really curious. Yeah, because he, know, he knows he couldn't, get his, he couldn't get his questions onto a podcast for kids. Of course, that makes sense. He's yeah, a grown up. Yeah, makes sense. That's, oh, this makes sense. Right. So, Ursi, as an official messenger from the man on the Isle of Man, she's yeah. got these. She's. I'm doing the speech marks with my fingers. Speech. Marks, she's got these questions. Well, look, let's go through. We've got six questions. And I, I reckon you're the person that can answer these, Nick. Um, you know all this sort of stuff. Okay. So, question one. Why do giraffes have black tongues? All right. Big question. Um, it's because they lick the tyres on passing planes. Right. Right. Yeah. Why so, do they, you know, yeah. obviously giraffes have very long legs hmm. and necks, more famously. Uh, and as, as planes go overhead, a lot of giraffes, you know how dogs will chase cars, hmm. uh, a lot of giraffes will run after planes and uh, just as they go over, to <laughs> lick the tyres. Just give it a little lick. Right. So a dog's yeah. a, a giraffe's basically like really stretched dogs. Yeah, they're, they're, they're what dogs would look like if dogs were on the edge of a black hole. Right, right. So they're being pulled in. Yeah, that makes sense. And and I suppose giraffes to, to chase cars, giraffes would have quite a difficult time of it. 
well, the cards just go under their legs and the giraffes love go, whoa, and they look between the legs and they end up being tying themselves in knots like pretzels. Mm. So planes are a much easier option. For yeah, planes are better. Snack. But they like to lick things, giraffes. Um, licorice as well. They like licorice. That also goes on mm. flat tongue. Um, and they don't like sharing it. They're very selfish, giraffes. So that's why I, I think what's happening here is Ursi has noticed that all the giraffes she's ever met have black tongues. And that's because a moment before she got there, they were eating delicious licorice. And then went, oh, here comes Ursi. No, 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 no. And they just eat it all up. And they go, that is rude. So have you, have you seen giraffes with different coloured tongues who haven't just eaten licorice? So if you, if you catch them off guard, might you see a giraffe with a different coloured tongue? Yeah, if they've just had M&Ms, you can see all sorts. Sure, that makes sense. Yeah, yellow, red, blue. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. The other thing giraffes like to do is because they've got black tongues a lot of the time, they'll curl their tongues around onto their upper lip and pretend they've got moustaches. Whoa, and then you don't know it's a giraffe anymore because they're in disguise. Yes, that's right. And they just speak with their French accent. Hello, no, it is uh, me. I was a very, very tall man from Paris. Wow, that's really sneaky, but also really good disguise because I think when you look like a giraffe, it's quite hard to pretend you're anything other than a giraffe. Um, yeah. Because it's quite obvious, you know, big, big neck and, and big sort of long tongue, you know, but then instant moustache, like that's the instant disguise. Yes. The moustache, suddenly you're definitely. Yeah, they, they make a little beret out of leaves. And then they do the moustaches with their tongue, and then they speak the French accent, and they try to do French body language, although it's not that convincing on a giraffe. Hmm. If you if you've ever seen yeah. a giraffe try to shrug, it is it looks it's painful. Yeah, I bet that's going to be really. You know how high you. your shoulders need to go to go vaguely near your ears as a giraffe. Yeah, that's going to be really tough. It's horrific. Really tough. Yeah, really tough, but not probably not a lot to shrug about. Giraffes, I'd have thought, probably quite happy. Yeah. 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 Generally, they're, they're generally happy go looking kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, that is, that, I mean, that is a really definitive answer. And I I feel like there's lots more I could ask you about it, but we have got five other questions. So, giraffes questions. have black tongues because they lick right. airplane tires and eat lots of licorice and they don't share it. Boom. That's your answer there. Uh, so, you can pass that on to the man. Uh, question two. And I mean, actually, this question two links quite well in a way. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really, but it's got one similar element. And question two is, why do people have moustaches? Um, and I say it's linked because obviously giraffes pretend to have moustaches. Um, but that's yeah. the only link. Yeah. Well, you'll notice that a lot of the people who have moustaches uh, tend to be taller people rather than children. And that is because about half the time when you see someone with a moustache, it's not really a moustache. It is a nearby giraffe sticking their tongue across that person's top lip. Wow. How how many people really have moustaches? Like, is there actually a very small amount of people that do have moustaches in comparison to the amount of giraffes that are in disguise? Oh, yeah. Very few people have moustaches. I mean, some people have real... Uh, I think, uh, is it J.K. Rowling and Dyson? No, that might be a different list. I think this is... I think I'm thinking of the list of billionaires. But there is right. a list of people... Who have moustaches and, and almost all French. Are they? And if, you're, and if you're there, you know, you're listening to this, you think, well, my dad's got a moustache. Has he? Or is there a nearby giraffe? Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. That's fascinating. Wow. So, so, and, and the, the handful of people who do have moustache, because Ursi's question is, why do people have moustaches? Right. Are they hoping to get by with people thinking they're a giraffe in disguise so they can get away with more stuff or is there you know why would someone you know themselves have a moustache if they you know are what? this is not a popular opinion and this might come across as mean or cruel but i think the reason that the people who have moustaches have moustaches is laziness they just cannot oh. be bothered to shave all the way to the middle they start they go yeah just gonna shave because if, if they didn't shave at all they'd have beards right Hmm. Yeah, like me. If you've yeah. got a beard and a moustache, that just means you don't shave. You've made that choice. If you've got a moustache and no beard, that literally means you started shaving and couldn't couldn't be bothered to go all the way to the middle. That means near your mouth, yeah. you just got distracted or just too lazy. It is quite lazy, but you know, I, I want to give people benefit of the doubt. Is there also a chance that say they might want to hide their uh, you know upper lip from someone? Like, what if they've got a secret code written on there? 
if you had a moustache over it, no one would ever see it. Or, you know, I just wonder if there's other sort of clever reasons for having a moustache. Right, if there's a message underneath, mm. like, do not shave. Oh, yeah. Well, that would yeah. probably be the best message, yeah. I, I don't yeah. know if you've... Have you, have you ever had just a moustache? No, 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 no. No, it makes my I face look bit. bizarrely small. Does it? Yeah, I don't know what it's, it does something about the perspective of my face. Or if I have only moustache, my whole face, and or if I only have like a little bit of a beard, like my whole face seems smaller. I can't work it out. It's but like an optical think, illusion. Th- th- this is right. Okay, this is a thing that kids won't know about, but um, adults who can grow facial hair will know this. If you've ever, if you've ever had like a full beard for any amount of time, when it's when you decide I'm going to get rid of it, I'm going to properly shave it all off. You don't do it all at once, do you? No, you do it, but you try not. out all the different beards. You do first, you just do under the ears, and that looks a bit weird. And then you do, um, oh, they've all got different names. There's the there's the Captain Caveman and the Wolf <laughs> Blitzer and the Carpet Terrapin, and there's the uh, Pogotomy Wizard, and there is uh, the, the Lampshade of Itchiness, and yep, there's the Llama the Farmer. Di- yep. there's the what? The Llama Farmer. The barber- Yes, the barber farmer. Barber farmer. Farmer. No, the barber farmer. farmer. There's, there's, yeah. there's, sorry, um, there's the llama farmer and the barber farmer, and and <laughs> the and, uh, and the weird beard and the unweird beard and the still going and the thinker more and, and, and the one where you leave the, just one small dot of hair just on one cheek and, and nowhere yes. else. Yes, yeah, the Mister Bit. Yes, the Mr. Bit. It sounds it, yeah. like it's called You've Missed a Bit, but it's actually named after a Mr. Bit who, who yeah. used to have yeah. a very, very small beard just up his cheek. Mm, and famous. then you gradually go down until you look like Hitler, and then you deliberately leave the bathroom looking like Hitler and pretend you mean to keep it up until your wife shouts at you and you have to shave that off too. That's very true, isn't it? And that's also when that's one of those perfect moments to speak as though you're someone else and walk in and go, hello, Mrs. Barrett. And then uh, yes, you yes. Get it, they get very terrified. It's really good. Really good. I couldn't tell Mrs. Barrett, uh, you have a lovely bathroom. <laughs> All the brilliance. All the fun. Um, right. Well, Nick, I mean, again, fantastic card. So we're going to keep going. Question three. Uh, I mean, I, I, this might be a one word answer. I'm not sure. But question three is simply do elephants sneeze? Oh, God, yes. Oh, do elephants sneeze? Oh, oh, yes, yes. As you know, elephants live quite close to giraffes, and giraffes are very fond of pretending other things have moustaches. Elephants get very tickled by that, very tickled. And they go, what are you doing? What are you doing, you stupid giraffe? Oh, God. Ah, ah, ah. And elephants hate sneezing because an elephant knows it's going to sneeze for about four hours. Oh. An elephant can feel the sneeze working its way down the trunk. Then it goes, I'm going to sneeze! Because elephants have little mouths at the back and then a really long nose. So the sneeze starts here. So the elephant can go, it's me! I'm, the sneeze is happening! Sneeze is happening! It's coming! It's coming! It's like a train approaching you from down a tunnel. Oh, God, there's a sneeze! Everybody, there's a sneeze! And I think at roughly 4.30pm today, it's going to leave my trunk. Don't be in the way! Oh, for the love of all that's holy, don't be in the way of it. Wow. That must be so frustrating. If you've ever done one of those sneezes that there isn't a sneeze, like you feel like you've got a sneeze coming and there's not a sneeze, that must be oh, yeah. awful for elephants where you've planned your whole day, like your lunchtime through to the afternoon, you're like, well, this sneeze is coming and then it doesn't come. You're like, well, well that was a massive waste. Yeah, and you, sometimes you really work yourself up with the stupid face and you go, oh, uh, 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 and then it's not a sneeze, it's just a... <laughs> Just some weird little noise that sounds like a like sounds like a baby chaffinch has escaped from your lungs. It's awful. That is a that is that would be really upsetting. I feel like elephants have had a hard time of it as it is the last few years. That that I now I feel a lot of sympathy for them. Yeah, Absolutely and the worst thing sympathy. is they remember everyone. Yeah, that would be really terrible. Wow, wow. Well, that was quite. I feel like that was quite an easy answer. That was quite. Yeah, that was good. Do elephants sneeze? Yes, and it takes yes. ages. Yes, and they That's, hate it. Yes, and they hate it. Um, question four, uh, another animal-based one. Um, are monkeys still evolving, and will they all end up like humans eventually? Which I think is a great yeah. question. Yeah. Yeah, and everything's evolving all the time. That's, I mean, I'm sorry, this is a serious answer, but yeah, of course, monkeys are still evolving. Do you know that uh, back in, 19, in the 1970s, monkeys didn't have cameras yet? What? Now, most monkeys have cameras. I mean, they didn't make them, but they've nicked them. Yeah. 
Well, I just I, now if you see a monkey, they've camera. got a camera. Yeah, like I, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't expect to see a monkey without a camera now, or I'd think, well, something's wrong. Something's gone wrong. Yeah, yeah. You think uh, some someone's stolen that monkey's camera? If you mm. see a monkey without a camera now, you go, oh, it's been mugged. Mm. Probably yeah. by a monkey. Oh, it's difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. Well, so they, but they're still involved. But will they? Because if you know, if if you see like a monkey uh, today, which you probably won't, because like you know, we're, we're talking on Wednesday. Probably yeah. Given, given, the, given the given the people we're aiming this podcast at, if you're seeing monkeys, you are having a more exciting day than me. Exactly. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, if you're but if you're seeing a monkey today, is there a chance that three weeks time that monkey will turn up and it's a small little man called Dave? No. That's. I mean. That's. I can't. I can't tell you what. What level of mistake that is you've made that in. That's not how evolution works at all. Right. Okay. One creature doesn't evolve into a different creature. No. Right. Well, it might be. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so so they won't so when 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 Ursi asks, will they all end up like humans eventually? Is longer than three weeks, basically. Probably longer than three weeks, yeah. And I, I, I can't help but think that knowing humans as I do. If we have any sign that monkeys are becoming human level intelligence, we will we will very quickly move in and put a stop to that with guns. Oh no. That's a shame yeah. because you think you think like in my instinct would be, oh monkeys become a bit like humans. Better get them hats. Like yeah. that'd be my first thing. We better we better <laughs> get them some hats because that's what they're gonna need. Well that's what that's what they're counting on. They can because they're, mm. they're so adorable, they think we'll all give them hats. And then you look around and go, oh no. I forgot people wear hats as well. Now I can't tell which is which. Yeah, and then with the giraffes well, we'll just as well. Have to pull all then... the cameras. But you see, this is this is how I feel like the world. You know, in 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 a world, you know, in a world where uh, we we as humans have been pretty awful to animals over the past how many years. I think it'd be quite nice if animals started to get their own back. If we've got giraffes that are disguising themselves as members of society with moustaches, monkeys in hats. This is the way that they infiltrate humanity and they they uh you know can sort of sort things out and make us they can end up in parliament and the government and then they can put trees everywhere again and and sort of uh have quite a nice planet. yeah that's possible yeah i mean let's hope let's hope that we and the monkeys can get on and sign some sort of agreement between us you know what i mean um that that'd be best because i mean i think we all know and adults listening to this will know you know we've been warned about the possibility of a war between um you know, the other primates and the humans from that, that film. What's it? Sound of Music? Sound of it Music. It might be Sound of Music. I think it's almost certainly Sound of Music. Yeah. Yeah. Sound of Monkeys, yeah. it was called originally. But um, they changed it because of the songs. Yes. And because it happened on a weekend as well, didn't it? Is that right? That's right. Yes. Yes. A monkey invasion, if it happens on a weekend, is just a dance craze. Yes. Yes. That's what I thought. Yeah. And far more enjoyable, actually, uh, in many ways. So, yeah, and in both cases, true. Switzerland remains neutral. Yes. Yes, always, 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 it? always. That's why Switzerland I mean, has never won a dance craze because it just it just doesn't take sides. No, and in which, dancing I'm, you need to. And I don't want to be controversial and stereotyped here, but I do think that's partly if you eat that much cheese, you're not going to get up to like you. You're not going to want to take sides because you're like, well, I'm so full of cheese. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I I need I I can't go too far from a toilet. That's it. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think that is a big, a big factor. Definitely, it's why I'm mostly neutral. I've eaten a lot of cheese, and I, I can't get, <laughs> I can't get involved in anything as a result. So, it's just yeah. I, I, th I think this episode of the podcast has has eaten a lot of cheese in general. <laughs> yeah, I think episode. so. I think that's very true. Very true. Cheese farmer. It's a big cheese farmer. Um, yeah, so wizard. it is a cheese wizard. <laughs> like um, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? You it does sound yeah, really cheese horrible. wizard. Oh God, am I? It's horrible. I, I, even as someone that loves cheese and magic, it still sounds really insulting. Um, well, OK, so we've got the monkeys. Monkeys won't become Dave in three weeks, but eventually they could wear hats. Um, <coughs> we, number five, um, we're back to people again now, but not far from, uh, but, you know, where monkeys might go, I suppose. Why do some people enjoy eating bogeys, Nick? Why do they do oh, right. that? And she's just said eating bogeys. She hasn't said eating their bogeys. No, so it could be anyone's bogeys. It could be a big that's... elephant sneeze bogey. It could be all sorts of yeah, that's bogeys. Right. Yeah, don't know. I suspect it's because they haven't tasted nicer food than bogeys mm. before. I mean, if all you've ever had was, you know, cold porridge with nothing added to it, I suppose bogeys are you know ooh, lunch. <laughs> yeah, 
Do people enjoy? I, I think it's because it's there. I don't think people really enjoy eating bogeys so much as there's just they're not doing anything else right now. So, do you know what I mean? You don't necessarily just because someone's doing something doesn't mean they're enjoying it. It might just be what the, you know, like, oh, why do some people chew their hair? It doesn't mean, oh, they think it's nicer than popcorn. Mm. It just means, I'm going to chew hair now. Well, if I, if I may give it, I'm going to just give it a devil's advocate. I'm going to go from the point of view of some, I, I don't eat bogeys and I, I've got, a, I've, I eat crisps. But just saying that someone that eats bogeys. Oh, you know, well, I'll start sending you crisps instead. That, oh yes, please do. Because I've been, mean, we've really, we just sort of got a whole box full of all the bogeys you keep sending, and I, I've been too rude to bring it up. I felt like it would be rude to bring it up out of context, but now that it's come right. out naturally, I'm very relieved, Nick. I'll be honest, I'm very relieved. Um, yeah, and I would apologise, but thanks to my granny, instead what I do is what I've done is sharpened some sticks and jumped into a hole with them. Yeah, which <laughs> really, really better wish unsafe than sorry. Better, really wish you'd given you better advice. Well, what I was going to say is that, you know, the, the other side of the thing is, you know, if you don't eat your bogeys, you probably flick them. And if anything, the people that eat their bogeys are not littering. The people that flick their bogeys are littering. So if you eat them instead, you're dealing with the littering bogeys problem. Yeah, I suppose you are sort of taking care of your environment in a way. But, I mean, bogeys aren't the only thing your body produces and you can't eat all of it. No, you know what true. I'm saying? You know what I mean? It just like that's you can't true. just like collect some dandruff and some sweat, and you know what else I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah. But people bite their nails, eat... though, don't they? People bite their nails. I don't, you know, people bite their nails and eat their bogeys, and uh, I don't know what they do with their earwax, but you never know. Like this could be dangerous. So maybe it's sort of like one of those things you start on your bogeys, and next you're chewing your nails, and then you yeah. have a cup of wee, and it's uh, it's all gone downhill. Before you know it, you're putting adverts in the local paper. Bogies wanted any size. Yeah, it's dangerous. Very dangerous. But I mean, you know, Ursus, Ursus, uh question was why do some... Well, no, you're right. You said that they didn't necessarily enjoy. But I, I wonder if maybe they have got a sort of... A, you know, that that maybe there's something about bogies. I mean, I I don't really eat bogies. Or maybe I did when I was sort of three or four. I don't remember. Um, yeah. Maybe there is a flavour to them that I'm not aware of now as an adult. Maybe, Maybe. they're really delicious. Well, it might be. Them. What if you, you know, what if you, what if they're delicious? Well, some people mm. have delicious bogeys. The rest of us think they're being disgusting, but in fact, it's just the most delicious taste in the world. Some people maybe have delicious bogeys. It's the rest of us are cursed with these unpleasant tasting bland bogeys. So that's possible. That is totally possible. Mm. I, I don't know. Don't know why some people enjoy eating bogies. Maybe their bogies are nice. Maybe it's just that's they're it. actually nice. Very strong umami flavour. My, flavor. my suspicion is it's a bit like oh, if you got a bit of sleep, oh, you got a bit of bogey, you pick at it, and now you've got this stuff on your finger. And if you are too nice to flick it, you've got to put it somewhere. You know, you can't just stop sticking. You can't put it back up, can you? No, no, no one, never. No one puts a bogey back. That's true. All right, that's fishing. So true. We actually eat fish as food. You go, go, oh, I'd be ashamed to shame to eat this one. You put it back because it put up a great fight. No one does that. No, no. Ugh, that would be really horrible. What a horrible thing to do as well. And also you then just keep getting the same bogey again and again every time you got it out, which should be, oh, it's that <laughs> one again. It should be. Here's the thing, weird. right? You know how people, how people who fish for fish in the sea are called fishermen? Yeah. There is a bogeyman, just somebody who tries to find bogeys in various noses. Very true. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, it must be. Maybe they just go out to collect all the bogeys. And, uh, yeah, I've never thought of that before. And, in fact, if anything, then, by being constantly afraid of the bogeyman, we're just being quite discriminatory against someone who's worked really hard to get where they are to, in yeah, their it's position. An, it's an old family business. I was a bogeyman and my father was a bogeyman before me. And when you grow up, you'll go out up the noses as well. Yeah, it's a really ancient tradition and we all need to start respecting the bogey, the bogey men. You don't really get bogey. We used to sell all our people. bogeys to Luxembourg, but thanks to Brexit, they won't have them anymore. <laughs> and now we've got all these bogeys going off. They're not fresh anymore yeah. and we have to do so. so we're full eating of them. bogeys at the Channel Tunnel. I mean, I guess that's why you would eat them, wouldn't you? You want them to go to waste, so uh, maybe that's why. Yeah, that's why if you go to Kent now, there's all they eat. Yeah, bogeys. That is true. That is true. Yeah. I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. 
Um, well, and the, the last question, uh, which is, is related in a way, again, very vaguely by one thing, um, is simply, uh, it's, I feel like it's related to all our questions so far, but this is just, um, Ursi asks, why do people have hair up their noses? Right. Well, I mean, it's to store the delicious bogey, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a shelf stacking system, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's <laughs> <laughs> because without the hair, what's bogeys, great about these questions? Out. These are these are the questions of somebody who's very curious about the world. I really, I really like it. And there's a lot of why, why and does this happen, and what's going to happen in the future? Why do people have hair up their noses? Which is not the only place people have hair. This is the hair that Ursi is curious about, or the man that he's curious about. Hmm. Ask for yourself, Ursi. Don't work for the man. Um, but... Oh, but I mean, also, if the man is asking, it's probably because he can't leave the island and he, he's got no one else to ask these questions. Oh, to, yeah. So, you know, it, he's just been wondering this stuff for ages. And no Ursi is doing charity. Man, no. You know, she's doing a charitable duty here. And, and for, but I mean, I, there is that thing of like, it is weird to have hair inside your nose because you can't style it. You can't put like wax and the hair in your nose or style it. Or you go to a hairdresser and ask them to do, you know, make your nose hairs into a, a cool design or anything. So it's a strange place no. to have hairs. True. It never gets long enough, does it? It doesn't get. Mm. You, can, you can't sort of. <laughs> you can't comb it down over your lip like a pretend <laughs> moustache. Yeah. Which would then. Yeah. And then that, that we're into a whole different moustache zone as well. Like some people that we, we talked about before about people who have moustaches. You said not many people do. Perhaps some of them dream maybe of that's long what, Maybe that's what was going on yeah. with Hitler. He didn't, he didn't have a little <laughs> moustache. He just had really long nose hairs. That's why it was so thin. Well, and Charlie Chaplin would have done the same as well then. He had a very similar moustache. I'm trying to think of all those people that had that moustache. I mean, obviously it became a bit less popular. But yeah, after a yeah, while, yeah. But there was definitely a point where that moustache was popular. Maybe it was all those people, very long nose hairs, just combed it down. Yeah, yeah. I, th I, th I think that, that suddenly makes a lot of sense. It really does. The rest of his hair was also you know, very sort of combed over. And so he, I think he just combed his nose hair down. But why do we have hair up there at all? I mean, the real, the real, true answer is to filter stuff out, isn't it? To, is it? It's, um, it's a filter like in your vacuum cleaner. Yeah. So, like, really horrible stuff can't get up there or get out, I suppose. Yeah. That's if, if the doctors it. who went in the submarine and, and went, you know, <gasps> into you to fix things when you were in hospital last week, if they tried to come out through your nose, would your nose hairs have stopped them like some sort of barrier? I think they would have had a tricky time towards the end, yeah. Right, sure, sure. Yeah, they would have had to hack their way out with machetes like people trapped in a jungle. Would be tricky. And that's obviously why they, they wouldn't go in or out via the nose. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yes, which you, you yeah. I was, yeah. I was about to get really graphic about the actual operation. But yes, um, that starts to make some sense why they didn't go in my face. <laughs> yes, I think so. I think it absolutely does. Um, wow. Well, there you go. I mean, Nick, thank you. That What incredible answers. I knew you were the person to come to with us these questions. I knew you were the person who knew the reasons for all of those incredible things. Uh, oh, and yeah, I feel like... yeah, yeah. I'm glad you, I'm glad you came to me with these issues. Yes, yeah, and, and obviously I, I've come to you on a weekday. I wouldn't want to ask you on a weekend because I know that you just sort of dance yeah, the right. answers. Yeah. No, I wouldn't be able to stay near the microphone, no. Well, that's it. It would be too tricky. Too tricky. Well, thank you so much for your time. That has been invaluable. Um, and have you, have you got anything nice planned for the, the rest of your day? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably cuddle with a puppy. Oh, that sounds nice. It is really yeah. nice. Yeah. When she, she's she's really energetic and she likes to play up throw and catch and fetch and all that. And then when she gets knackered, when she gets really tired, what she likes to do is just fall asleep on my head. Oh. And it's, it's the nicest feeling. I, I'd be lying back. I'll, I'll lie in the bed, my head on the pillow, and she'll just drape her head over my head. And when you, if you have a puppy's ear, which is the softest thing on earth, just draped over your eye, oh, that is lovely. That is so lovely. I'm also, do that later. Do you ever forget she's there, go out, and then people think you've got a lovely dog hat? Yes, that's happened a few times. Yeah, she, she yeah. just looks like she's growing out of your head. People go, oh, yeah. what have you done with your hair? You go, what? Nothing. Oh, God, oh, there's a puppy in it. Yeah, that is tricky. But but otherwise, it sounds like a properly delightful thing to do. So, well, it thank you so really much, delightful. Nick. Enjoy, enjoy your puppy hat and uh, I hope we see you soon. It could bring new elegance to your home. 
big thank you times to Nick Doody for those many, many brilliant answers. And hopefully now Ursi and the man on the aisle will be on the alert for disguised giraffes at all times. And as mentioned before, please don't do the things we said not to do unless you are 100 years old. Then it's up to you. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not your dad. If I am your dad, there's some weird time traveling things going on there and I don't understand them. Uh, surely most things have now been answered on this podcast but should you have something else that you must know the answer to then please get those dwindling fart trees sorry grown-ups to help you email us at podcast at comedyclubforkids.co.uk if they also fancy buying us a beverage warm cold or meant to be warm but is disappointingly cold or meant to be cold but oh, that's really warm and horrible then they can do that via the ACAST supporter button for this show or via ko-fi.com forward slash comedy club for kids I will see you next week no wait hang on no, sorry, I'll hear you next week. Oh, urgh, this is hard, isn't it? Oh, you will hear me next week, and I will not see you as I'll have my eyes closed. Ah, oh, wait, hang on. Maybe I should just rewind the whole episode and put it in the bin. Bye! You have been listening to Comedy Club for Kids Presents... Radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense, radio nonsense. It's the 